Today I want to do a quick lab on using the NAT and Bridge external connectors in Cisco Modeling Labs. I know people have some questions on how you get these set up and I wanted to show you how you could get everything configured and get internet access out of your networks for any labs you want to do to experiment with things. Now I've color coded the interfaces that are attached to each type of bridge. That's just for a visual reference so that when you're looking at the configurations, you're looking at the CML lab, you can see where everything is attached. So let's do a quick walkthrough of each connection type and how everything is set up. Here we can take a look at NAT and go to config and see that we're using the NAT virtual bridge. I have this unmanaged switch so that I can provide a NAT interface to the management zero, which is in a VRF on Nexus. And then I'm using the default VRF here, and this is just pulling a DHCP address in the configuration of the Catalyst 8000V. This interface is in a different subnet, and I create a NAT connection between these two interfaces so that this host can reach the internet. On the bridge, I'm using the system bridge, I have another unmanaged switch that connects this G8 interface of the CAT 8000V, which I've assigned to a VRF. And then I have this E1 and E2 interface. Now I've only put those in a VLAN, and then I've assigned an address, a route, and a DNS address so that I can actually get out to the internet from this switch. Let's take a look at the CAT 8000V and how everything is configured on there to provide internet access for both the NAT interface and the management interface. If we open up the console, I already have the running config pulled up, but we can look at gig one and we see that I have an IP address set for DHCP. So this will tell the interface that you need to pull your interface configuration from DHCP to get an IP. For gigabit two, I've assigned a different subnet that's not part of the NAT pool. And this is so that I can test out and demonstrate how to get out to the internet when I have NAT configured up. Now, with DHCP set up, I don't have a means to reach into the device using something like Ubuntu outside of my CML lab to SSH. So that's why I created this Gigabit 8 interface where I've set up a network that's part of my home network where I can SSH in. And I can demonstrate that by bringing up this Ubuntu host on my Windows computer and doing an SSH as Cisco at 192.168.1.204. Now we'll wait for this to log in, and we'll see that I'm on that internet NAT host, which we can see here. So this is how I'm able to SSH in the box without using something like PADI to perform the translations. And now I have native SSH connectivity from anywhere on my home network. So how can I verify the configuration? So real quick, we're going to do a show IP int brief. And we can see the IP address for gig1 has been pulled through DHCP. Gig2 is using the statically assigned address that I put in the configuration, and Gig8 is using the statically assigned address that's part of my home network and connecting to the bridge interface. Now if I go to ping an address, if I do ping 8.8.8, .8 .8, by default I use the default VRF, and I'm going to be able to reach the Google DNS server. Now if I do ping google.com, you can see that because I have the NAT address, I'm using the DNS servers that come with that, and I'm able to do the host name lookup for my ping. Now, if I do the same thing, I do verf management 8.8.8, .8 we can see that I'm able to ping, but I do not have a name server set up on my management verf, so I'm not able to look up the FQDN for google.com. So this is how we kind of get the interfaces configured with the IP addressing. This is how we get DHCP and that separation. If I wanted to have you know NAT for one side and I wanted to have uh, a bridge mode for me and my management interfaces so I could SSH into them. Now let's do a quick look at what I did to build NAT connectivity between the two hosts. And again, I set up the IP NAT inside to this gig two. I set up NAT outside to gig one. And then a little bit further down, I have an IP access list 10 that allows my Ubuntu host network to get out. And then I set up this IP NAT inside source list 10, which matches this access list interface, gigabit one and overloaded it. Now we can look at the Ubuntu host in CML and I will open up the console here. And if I do IPA, 
we see I have an IP address set statically in the configuration and this is how it will come up if you use the lab and I'm going to do a ping to google.com and I'm using NAT through the CAT 8000V to reach out. It's very important to understand that if you don't have the NAT configuration set up on the 8000V, just doing an IP route and trying to use the NAT address doesn't work. I, I tried it, it just drops packets, and I think it has something to do with how traffic gets brought back to the device and you're basically asymmetric routing and it's not able to get back in. So this way, I'm able to build that full internet connectivity for any of the devices that are on the network here. So this guy is able to reach out and ping. Uh, and then if I wanted to do something like apt update, I'm able to reach out and pull updates in from my Ubuntu host. So that's how we get NAT set up and how we get connectivity out for NAT. Now we're gonna take a look at bridge mode. So now let's go down and take a look at the bridge host. We're gonna close this out. And again, we have the same kind of thing going on here. We've got these interfaces in the bridge network. This is set to NAT. I'm going to open up the console here and we'll take a look at the configuration. Now we can see I have a VLAN 400 set up. My VRF context for management has pulled in a name server and IP route from the NAT configuration. So when it pulled DHCP, it got an IP address, it got the NAT or the name server configuration, and it got its route automatically. We can look down and we see that I've set up an interface VLAN 400 with an address that's part of my home network and I've set up interface 1 and 2 interface 1 and 2 in VLAN 400 so my Ubuntu host connects to ETH2 ETH11 connects to the unmanaged switch to provide internet access and if I scroll down to management 0 we can see that it is set to pull DHCP now just like the internet net I'm going to come out and I'm going to log in to 206 and I'm going to Type my password in and we can see that I'm in the Annex OS box through management. I'm going to ping verf management the eight verf management and we see that I'm able to reach the Google DNS server. I'm going to do the same thing I did with google.com and again I'm able to reach the FQDN because we have a name server. Now I'll do the same thing from my default side, ping 8.8.8. .8 I'm able to reach out, ping google.com, and I have no DNS server set up, so I have no way to get out to google.com on the default verf. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll look at the Ubuntu host here, pull up the console, and I will do an IPA. We see that I have an IP address on my home network. I am able to ping out to the DNS server and I'm also able to ping out to google.com because I have set up a DNS server for the Ubuntu host, which then means I should be able to do sudo apt update. And just like the NATed host, I'm able to reach out to the internet and start pulling packages down. So I hope this was a helpful video on getting the external connectivity set up in your lab, the different ways you can do it, and how you can mix the two external connector types within a single lab. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I will definitely respond to them. I'm going to put this out on a Google Drive. You'll be able to find that link out in the description. And all the configurations will be ready to go. The only thing you might need to do is for the bridge network, update the systems to use an address that is part of your home network. But with all that said, I hope this was helpful. I hope you're able to get this lab running. And if you have any questions, definitely reach out. Thanks for watching.